Richard, I mean, this has been a year. I think a lot of us uh, who follow uh, this market and follow this industry, we look at investment banking and, more importantly, the lack of investment banking activity, at least relative to what we saw in prior years. W when you look at equity markets and, for that matter, debt capital markets as well here, do you anticipate that we're going to see a pickup in that activity next year? And if so, is one going to outweigh the other? Yeah, so I, I think if you look at capital markets in general, this has obviously been a weaker year. You know, our expectations is that capital market revenues are going to be down somewhere between 10 to 15 percent in total. However, if you peel it back a little bit, you know, basically what's happened is M&A revenue is going to be down, we think, somewhere between 30 to 35 percent. ECM revenue is going to be down somewhere between 70 to 75 percent. And as you said, DCM revenues are going to be down around 40 to 50 percent. Against that, the trading businesses have actually done a lot better. You know, so our anticipation is that fixed income trading is probably going to be up double digit this year, and equity revenue, trading revenues are going to be broadly flat. You know, so if you look at the overall capital markets picture, it's obviously weaker compared to last year, but it's pretty much all driven by the primary businesses. Our expectations are, are that you should see some pickup in the second half of next year, especially in M&A and ECM, but it's clearly going to require more normal volatility levels in markets, as well as just greater corporate confidence in terms of just the outlook and the ability to predict earnings. Well, one thing I would say, though, is it's important to kind of look at the longer term picture here. So last year was obviously a banner year for capital markets. Mm -hmm. If you look at where revenues are running relative to 2019, they're still up 15 to 20 percent. So obviously a pullback relative to last year but relative to the longer term picture, it's still yeah. relatively healthy levels of activity. Richard, I want to get your thoughts on the trading environment. Like you said, trading has really been a bright spot. But one of the narratives of this year, one of the big themes has been that trading conditions across asset classes, but particularly in the Treasury market, have really deteriorated. And it caught my eye that actually in October, you had Treasury Secretary Janet Yellen talk about that liquidity issue. And one of the potential reasons that's been named is that you don't have big financial institutions, you don't have the big banks as willing to act as market makers here because of balance sheet constraints and just the amount that they have to hold in reserves. Has that been an issue in your eyes? Do you feel that the regulations here are a little bit too strict? Look, there's, there's no question, you know, market liquidity, not just in Treasury markets, but I think across a broad number of markets, has deteriorated this year. And I think that there's clearly a number of factors that are driving it. One of them is one that you've highlighted, which is that there's been a significant increase in capital requirements uh, for a number of the largest institutions in the U.S. So J.P. Morgan, Bank America, and Citigroup all have had to accumulate capital this year because of increasing capital requirements. And I think that has resulted in some of the larger broker dealers just withdrawing liquidity from some of those markets as they've tried to generate capital. Secondly, look, economic uncertainty, I think, is really weighed in terms of banks' willingness to commit risk uh, in some of these markets. You know, and I think, look, the third thing is that, obviously, the size of the broker dealer community just relative uh, to some of the clients is, is very different to what it was in the past, and I think that's had an impact as well. You know, I, I do think it's something that the regulators will have to think about, which is, look, how do you calibrate capital? capital ratios in an appropriate way to make sure that systemic risk is minimized, but at the same time without restricting uh, orderly operations of financial markets, especially if we're going to go into an economic downturn and bank balance sheets will become more important in terms of just providing liquidity and, and capital to, to the real economy.